Hello, welcome to my video about C Sharp getting started. In this video, we will talk about the C Sharp programming language. We will see what C Sharp is. We will see how to install Visual Studio Community. Then we will see what variables are, data types and operators. We will talk about arrays, strings and lists. Then we'll see how to make in programs interactive. We'll talk about conditions, iterations. Next, we'll talk about OOP, so object-oriented programming with classes and objects. And finally, we'll see how to read and write to text files. So, what is C-sharp? So, C-sharp is pronounced C-sharp. It's written C with this uh, asterisk. Is an object-oriented programming language developed by Microsoft in the early 2000s. Um, it is part of the .NET framework and is meant to make it easy to develop all kinds of applications. So you can develop console applications, Windows applications, web applications, and even mobile applications. <clears throat> so why would we learn C Sharp? We saw uh, earlier that you can write all types of programs in it. Uh, so it uh, is very similar to other high-level programming languages like Java or C++. Uh, if you want to learn C Sharp, you don't have to have a necessary uh, programming experience, but a basic understanding of functions and program execution can be helpful. So C Sharp is part of the .NET framework, as I said. Um, so the .NET framework includes a large a pre-written code base so that programmers can use without having to write everything from scratch uh, means you can uh, rapidly develop all kind of applications and lastly c sharp is an object-oriented programming language um, it breaks a uh, programming problem into objects that interacts with each other and we're looking at various object-oriented programming concepts in this course um, good so next we'll see how to install visual studio uh, community so this is the ide where we'll write our uh, c-sharp programs good uh, before we can start developing applications in c-sharp we need to download visual studio community so visual studio community is a free compiler provided by microsoft uh, yeah it's basically more than a compiler, it's an integrated development environment, an IDE that includes a text editor for us to write our code and also a debugger to help us identify programming errors. So we can download the uh, Visual Studio community from this link here. Uh, we, will, we have to open this in a browser window. Let's check that. Um, open a browser with this link. Good. Uh, once you open that link, you get to this page. So Visual Studio.microsoft.com BS community. And this link here you can have a download button. Just click on it and the download will, will start uh, soon. So once you click that link, you will have to keep this file. So I already installed Visual Studio, so I don't have to do it. Uh, but please install visual studio and come back here um, and next after visual studio is installed just follow the steps from the installer we, we will have to open visual studio this will look like this so i have visual studio 2022 and here we have to create our first uh, console application so it's the most basic application we can create. Uh, just click on this link, create a new project. And uh, we get here all kind of application, select your console application, click next. And here we name it, uh, for example, hello world. And uh, click next. Next, we'll see the .NET framework we want to use. So the latest version is .NET 
on my PC. If you're watching this video at a later time, we'll see probably newer versions. But uh, they should work also, also like this, so similar. Let's select this and create. Uh, good. Once the the application is created, so this is our first uh, console application. Um, here, for example, we see a basic uh, command. So we have this console, this console class, which has this method write line. We'll see exactly what classes are and methods later, but for now, just just see that we're using here a built-in uh, library so the console uh, class from the system console uh, there is located if you navigate with f12 to this you see where it's located in the in the base class library so this is the system console uh, dll and we're using this this console class is a static class we'll see also what static classes are uh, next good so this basically prints to the output window this text let's see how this looks like so running this application is done by just clicking this uh, run button here and we'll see the result hello world so this is what we wanted to show so this is the output window and here we, we display this text. Um, good. So this was our first console application. Uh, what I want to show here. So basically we have here an output window. We can pin it here. So this shows us uh, the build process and if there were errors or not. We have here also IntelliSense support. So for example, if we write here console, you see I get some suggestions. So this is very helpful in Visual Studio. Um, so if, if we have errors and uh, incomplete statements, we see here uh, suggestions and how to fix this. So this probably will not run. If we try to run this again, you see we get compiler errors. Uh, We'll see here uh, some suggestion what is wrong and how to fix them. And basically we will, we will delete this. We will see a lot of, of code and statements uh, in how to write them in C Sharp next. So since C Sharp 6, we can write the code directly here in a console application. So previously we had to write a main function which has some arguments uh which which added some extra code but now it's not necessary at all we can write here we create a console application and everything is is uh prepared for us so we can write directly the instructions here good uh what i want to show here also are comments so you see here we have this text uh, which is a comment. So these two slashes before any text makes this makes this uh, the following text as a comment. So for example, we can put this also in comment, and now we there is nothing executed. So basically, this these two statements are ignored by the compiler, and uh, yeah, we're going on and without executing anything. So comments can be put like this with two slashes, or we can have here a slash and a an star and here we can end it similar like this so this is also valid comment so everything what comes between this starting and end uh, sequence is, is is treated as a comment now we're gonna talk about variables and operators so now that you're familiar with uh, visual studio community and have written our your first uh, console application let's get some coding some programming we will learn about variables and how to name declare and initialize variables uh, we'll also learn about some common operations then we can perform with variables 
So basically variables are names given to data that we need to store and manipulate in our programs. For instance, we have here a variable uh, with the type int. So it's an integer. It's a number basically, which is assigned the, the value five. And here down below, we have another variable. It's a string. So it's a series of characters uh, with the name my name, which we assign this string uh, Dan. So after you declare such a variable, your program will allocate a certain area of your computer storage space to store this data. And you can then access and modify this data by referring to it by its name. So by number or uh, my name. Um, good. Data types in C sharps there we have a series of data types. Let's see which we have here. So for example, we saw earlier the integer, so its short form is int. For example, 31 minus uh, 45. So basically we have this range for integer from minus this big number to plus this another big number. And uh, there are other data types for storing numbers. So for example, if you need numbers only between this range you can optimize optimize the memory usage uh, because it uses only is its uh, range is only between these values from 0 to 255 um, we have another data type is a char for example is only one character the a the comma etc we have the bool uh, data type which is only these two values true or false then we have the floating point numbers, which is the float with precision of seven digits. If you need uh, better precision, we can use the double, which has precision of 15, 16 digits. And we have the decimal, which has a higher precision. So this is the decimal is mostly used in, uh, in banking applications and where a lot of computation is done with money and so on. Um, good uh next we'll see the variable naming so we saw earlier the name uh, of a variable can contain only letters numbers or underscores the first character cannot be a number um, so for example let's open again the the visual studio console application we just created previously so let's declare here a variable variable you see we get here an error so um, the name variable does not exist okay so if we delete this you see it's valid again um, also variables are case sensitive so this one is different from this one where also the only uh, casing differs so these are basically two variables um yeah we'll we will also use camel casing so camel casing is the practice of writing compound words in with mixed casing capitalizing the first letter of each world except the first world so for example we declare another variable this is a variable okay so this is camel casing we get here a suggestion to initialize it with something yeah let's see something here and this is camel casing so we have each word uh where is separated uh, so the separation is done by uh, the next word is written with capital uh, case good uh initializing a variable so every time you declare a new variable you you need to give it an initial value this is known as initializing a variable um and also you can change the value of the variable in your program later so we have uh, multiple ways of initializing variables um, let's see here we saw here how to initialize some basic variables um, we we can here for example declare multiple variables uh, also in line for example in first 
first variable, second, three. This works also. So you have two int variables where you assign the value of three. Uh, the assignment sign uh, has a different meaning from the equal sign we learned in math. So the equal sign here is known the, as the assignment sign. It means we are assigning the value of on the right side of the equal sign to the variable on the left. A good way to understand a stand statement like this is uh, basically we're just assigning three to these variables here. Good. Next. Um, we can assign also a variable we declared here to another variable. So for example, we can write here first. So this variable equals, let's say this variable from here, we're copying it from here. Good. And uh, we can then just output this to see its value. First. So the value of this one, if we would have here, for example, six, the value of first will be, let's see. So the output window will show me that the value is now three because the last statement we executed is we assign this first variable from here is not six anymore. It gets the three from here. So this is also shown at the output window. So console right trying just displays the value of a variable on the screen. Good. Let's uh, see some operators in action. Let's clear a bit here the screen. Um, we can clear this all. We'll start from scratch here now again. Um, let's say we have here two variables. Five and another one good we have we can perform here some operations so we can perform uh, xz for example we can have another variable x plus y um, and again output this and this basically is, is the addition operator. This just adds these two values together. Let's see the value of it. So it opened here in the output window and you see the value of Z is five plus two is, is seven. We can have also subtraction operations. Um, multiplications, all kind of operation we can do with math, a division. So the division rounds down the answer to the nearest integer. And uh, we have also the modulo operation. You can try all this out and see the results. So this operator gives the remainder when uh, when five is divided by two so let's see the reminder the remainder here is is one yeah so if you divide five by two you get two and the remainder is, is one so this is uh, output here good uh so these are some basic operations uh what we can do more we have also this um this other operator, let's see uh, if I have opened this one. We see here the operators described. We have the assignment operator, the arithmetic operators, and the conditional operators. These are useful in conditional cases. We'll see next the if statement. Um, good. Let's see, go back to Visual Studio Community. We have also this plus plus operator. So for example, X plus plus. So basically this means is the same like doing something like this. X, X equals X plus one. 
so these operators are the same so basically this means here we're adding a 1 to x and here again this is the same syntax like th the same uh, meaning like this but it, this is a shorthand operation so this for example we should get here a 7 so we're adding 1 is 6 and another addition with 1 will be 7 so run it again and you'll see here if you run it we get again the 7 yeah next we'll see uh, type casting we, we will have a float a decimal point here so this variable x is 5.3 floating point number and uh, yeah type casting means we we want to convert x to an integer so for example this is x so let's see so we are converting this to we'll we'll lose some precision here but we'll we this is type casting we are preceding the the variable want to cast to an integer and assign it to the y here and then we will see the result so this will be uh, here the y would be 5 so we're getting the integer part of this just run it and see we get this 5 here so these were the basic uh, types and uh, operators in C sharp next we're going to talk about um, arrays strings and more advanced data types next we're going to talk about array lists and strings so in the previous uh, part we we covered some basic data types that are commonly used in C sharp so besides these basic data types C sharp also comes with a few advanced data types in this chapter we are going to cover three advanced data types array lists and strings uh, so also we're gonna see how to use these arrays so basically an array is a collection <coughs> is a collection of data so we see how, how to declare it we have an integer with this uh, square brackets it means we have a list of values of this type here um, the strings is basically a list of a series of char or chars or characters and uh, we have also the list and a dictionary so the list is basically a collection of of uh, of data types of type int and we create here this new list and the dictionary is similar but this has a key value pair of values um, let's see how to how to use this list in visual studio just delete this let's declare an array of values uh, names so we have uh, we have to declare a string of type name and this equals and here we create some uh, some names so then Paul and Anna yeah good so here we declared some string names so when this program executes so the the c sharp compiler will allocate a certain area of memory for storing this data in order to process them and uh, we can also display here a value from here we can access it by index so to access the first index so the name then we have to it's zero based index so the arrays are zero based indexes in c sharp also the list everything and uh, to access the first element we get it with the names from zero so this is the first element and let's see the output i will get it from here and you see the output is so we get the dan, dan from here yeah um good so we can access them by index we can uh, access also if you don't know the index we want to access the last element we can do it like this names length Opa. <clears throat> uh, 
because it's zero base index we have to to get the last element minus one because it starts with zero let's check again we get now the anna see like this so we get the last element so we get the names from the the last the length of the element is three minus one good let's see some other operations so for example we can also modify uh, this strings from here so for example we can have something like we get this element from here so we get this element and we want to reassign change the name of anna for example so this is anna and uh, so we add something new here let's say anna parker yeah good so now when we execute the code we see that the name has changed on this last position and the name is now anna parker we can also print all element all elements in sequence let's see if we just uh so this basically will not print all the elements it just print the type of this of this uh variable so it is a string a string array good so the array uh, has also useful properties and methods um we have we can perform different operations so for example we saw here we have the length uh, method so this property so this returns us the length of the array we can also use some uh, copy methods to copy this array into other arrays so a lot of useful operation which are built in into the C sharp uh, base class library. We can also sort these names. So, for example, assuming we want to sort this this list here. So again, names dot sort. Mm -hmm. Not like this. something is not working here ah so this is is not working like this because this is a, a static method so we have to call this array sort yeah so this is the way to do it we see that this is a static abstract abstract sorry an abstract method which which uh, doesn't need to be initialized we just call this sort method which is also a static method and we see here that this sorts the names and now when we print again the name they are sorted alphabetically um, so in order to display all the names from this array we have to use a for each we will talk about the iterations and the for each later but for now i just copy paste it here so we have here an iteration so we are iterating over each element into these names and we'll we'll just uh, display it here yeah we'll just this two string is maybe not necessary because it is already a string just read it and now run it again and we'll see we get here all elements sorted into uh, alphabetical order good uh, so this was the the array class next we're going to talk about the string you see here this added automatically an using statement so using statement are necessary if you want to use base class libraries into our uh, logic good let's talk about strings now so a string is basically a piece of text so for example this is uh, 
that would declare the string message uh, equals hello world um, this is a string so the name of the string is message and the contents is hello world um, you can also declare empty strings and you can join strings as we saw earlier with the plus sign so we have we have different methods uh, in the base class library for this message uh, string type for example we have the length so for example just write like this uh, message dot length we have something else so we can format it a bit here just we're using here the concatenation so plus so we're using two strings here length uh, what else message dot we can use the we can extract basically a substring of this message or yeah substring we see here a lot of subjections so substring starting at index zero we get uh, one two three four five so we get the first five charts from this we get also hello we can use other methods like uh, message dot upper so this basically uh, so as I'm typing, I get suggestions and uh, to enable autocomplete, I just simply press the tab and the tab completes with the suggestion I get from Visual Studio. Let's see what we get here. So uh, we see here the length is 11, 11 chars. We get the substring, which is hello and to upper converts or letters from this uh, string to uppercase. There are a lot of other methods like equals splitting strings but uh, for now i think this is enough with the, the first uh, with some examples next we're going to talk about lists so uh, we saw what an array is um, so an array can ho only hold a fixed number of values so for example if you have an array uh, array And here we we get 10 values we have to specify here exactly the 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 size of it if you write my array so this array of uh, of 10 so for example this is zero based index but if you provide a higher value we'll get an an error so because the the you're exceeding the the maximum allowed value of the array um instead we can use lists sometimes they are more appropriate so we can list this is a generic type we can we can provide here the type of this uh, list is integer for example uh, ages so for example i have a new list and here this is the dynamic so we can uh, add different integer types so we declare this as integer so we can add only integer values uh, let's add here 23 ages add 18 okay so you got it so this is uh, how we declare a list and how to add some values of it we have the add method we can have also the count method which shows us how many items are in the array so for example again if we uh, ages dot count in the array it was uh, length but here is a count let's see we'll get here a two because two elements are in the list uh, we can insert elements into the list at specific in this uh, positions just a moment um, so uh, no first of all we we insert here a value we just insert 
at index one. So index one is here, index one. So after the first element, we want to insert the, the number 56. So this means that at position one, we have inserted uh, the, the, the integer value 56. You can also remove elements at specific positions. We can also check if, uh, if, if a list contains a specific string. Contains 23. This will return true or false. So this will return true or false value. So in case the, the value is present in the list, it will return true, if not false. Um, good. And uh, these are basically the mostly used methods with the list type. We can also have dictionaries, but dictionaries are basically uh, something else. It These are key value pairs, so dictionary you have here declared two values, so integer, this is the key and the value is string. Let's see how this look like. So this is a map, basically. And here we can add uh, elements to this dictionary. We get uh, the integer and for each integer we have to provide the string value. Good. We can add a lot of values. You see, I get some suggestions from Visual Studio. I don't know if they are very relevant or not. Uh, good. Value too, yeah. To retrieve some values from here, I can just for now uh, select this and comment this out. So to comment out a section of code, I will press Control K C. So K and C. So Control. Plus A plus C. So this basically comments out the line of code. To uncomment a line of code selected and press Control K U. This will uncomment uh, uh, some lines of code. Good. To display a value from the dictionary, again, console right line map. I will get the, the first uh, element. We access it by key and display, we display the value of it. So this works like this. If we run it, you see here we get the value one. Let's get the result here. You see the value one is displayed. So next we're going to talk how to make our programs interactive. Until now, we saw how to use variables, operators. We saw also to use some basic methods in C-sharp. And now we want to see how to write uh, some interactive programs. So for example, prompting a user to enter some, uh, some values and display this on the screen. We have, for example, this write line method. This simply prints out to the console this string and the read line method reads a string uh, from the input. Good, let's see how this works in Visual Studio. For example, we can have here two methods to write this test and test2. If we execute this, we see that these are printed in line. So the write method and the test test and a test2. If we want to print them on, on separate lines, we can simply put here write line. This simply means that this after this text is printed, uh, the cursor moves the, to the next line to a new line. Let's run this again. And you see here that the test and test2 are written on two separate lines. Good. Uh, further, we have the, the read line method. So what this does is uh, accepts a user input from the keyboard. Uh, let's see how this works. Um, so read reads the next uh, character from the standard input while read line reads a line of characters. Um, so this one, I will show you this example here. So I have a string user input. So 
console read line. So basically this one reads a line from the uh, weights until we type a string and press enter. So both read and read line methods read input user input as a string. Um, and this one will prompt the user to enter something. Let's see how this works. You see we get this uh, this flashing uh, line here and if we write something this simply accepts its input and the program has executed. If we want to print what we just entered we have to use again the console write line user input run this again and you see we it's waiting for user input test and it's it printed it out again with the console write line good uh sometimes it's necessary to convert the input that the user enters into a numeric data type uh, in order to perform calculation so for example just assume we want to have two values and display the addition of to the of of these uh, integers so for example value a no so i have two numbers a and b let's say these are two numbers and i want to display the sum of these two a plus b a plus b how would this work let's see run it again so the first i give two and three and the sum should be five but here is displayed as uh, 23 this is not fine because these are treated as strings let's let's say uh, let's say we we want to have them an integer values and for this one we have to convert the the string to an integer value so what the user inputs to a, to a, uh, to convert them to to numbers so here we have the convert method to int so basically this this simply converts the the value which is uh, read here from the console to an integer value and assign to the variable a and the same we do here for the b value and now we see that the the addition operator acts here differently so on integer it's it adds this two value together let's let's see this again run it again I saw two and three and enters the value is five. You see here that we converted it, it to integer value. Good. So these are some basic, some basic uh, examples of how to make our programs interactive and accept user input on a console and display the resulting value on the console too. Very well. Until now we saw how to write some simple c -sharp programs uh, you know how to use some different data types and uh, also you're able to write some simple programs which interacts with the user so in this chapter uh, in this uh, next part we will see how to how to check conditions and how to write some uh, simple iterations. So mostly we'll, we'll look at the if statement, the else statement and the iteration. We'll look at the for loop and the while loop. So most control flow statements involve evaluating a condition statement. The program will proceed uh, differently depending on whether the condition is met. Uh, we have, for example, different condition operators we'll see them here next so this is the equals value equality operator equivalence the value inequality here we, we with this one we can check that one value is less than another the opposite direction means that we check that that this value on the left is greater than the value on the right and we have the less or equal or greater than equal operator good uh, let's check now the the first control flow statement. So basically, we're looking at the the if statement. So um, 
The if statement is one of the most commonly used control flow statements. It allows the program to evaluate if a certain condition is met and to perform uh, the appropriate action based on the result of the evaluation. So it looks like this. So we have if we check here this expression. If it's true, then we execute the this logic from block one. If not, we do the execute the else close and we execute the block on the on this second uh, path. We'll see now just a simple example. Um, good, let's start with a simple example in Visual Studio. So for example, we have um, just prompt here the user to to give some input. So we want to, we have an age value and uh, we want to display something on the screen console right line enter your age this one prompts us to to uh, write something and uh, basically here we we accept the input from the console window uh, and we want to convert it as we saw before to an integer value so okay it gets some nice intelligence and auto completion if so if this age uh is is invalid let's say we have a age which is uh, less than zero or or greater than i don't know what's the age of the eldest person in the world <laughs> if it's greater than 100 30 let's say then we want to output something like this age invalid good uh, else we want uh, to display something um, for example if we can write it like this we can have another if statement in the else clause so if another condition if age let's say age is less than 18 years then we want to print a custom message like right line let's say you are a kid yeah it's like this and else we want to print a generic message like console right line your ages you're an adult adult uh, and your age is with the plus sign we can can concatenate these strings and put it like this so we have this this uh, use cases and just run it uh enter your age let's say i have a minus five let's see the first case if this works age is invalid so execute the second case so if it's i don't know 12 years you are a kid yeah and uh, the last uh, value let's say it's 37 you're an adult and your age is 37 you see here how it's simple to check some condition and display different messages based on user input good um so we saw how this if statement works now we're looking at the the loops so we're looking at the for loop how this works so this with this one we can iterate over a series of elements over a series of arrays or lists um it looks like this so for we get to the initial uh, element of the array so we start with the first element we check that we haven't reached the end of the list of uh, or the array and increment the the iterator in order to loop through all these elements from the list good let's let's see a basic example so let's delete this and write a simple for loop so for example want to iterate over some values i equals zero i less than five or ten let's say 
and we want to increment after each iteration the, the, the counter and we want to display this this string to the console yeah good let's say we're doing like this and running it well will give us something like this so we're starting with the zero and until we reach the 10 you see we have to use less than 10 so until we get to the end of this this uh, limit so we'll print all elements on the console window so if we want to print also the 10 we have to use here an equal sign this will basically uh, include also the 10 good so this is just a simple example um, this is example of the for loop we can we have also the for each loop i will show you how this works so for example let's assume we have some a list of some element list with some strings numbers yeah uh numbers this is new a the intelligence Ah, this gives us also some simple examples and we can use also the for loop to iterate over these elements and display them on the screen but we can use here it's simple to use the for each loop because it's very useful to get information from an array or list without making changes to it um, you can write here for each um, you can use the bar keyword bar number numbers we want to display the number you get here some intelligence and we see here the for each loop simply loops through the, all these elements and displays them here with the right line on the console so um yeah we can use also we have also the while loop so while loop uh repeatedly executes instructions inside the loop until while a certain condition remains valid for example the same can be done like this so let's say we have a counter again this is five and uh, we want to use now the while loop so while while this is greater than zero we want to execute some logic also right line but we also need to provide here to not get into an infinite loop to decrement this this uh this counter yeah we get here some suggestion this simply on each iteration it it decrements this value in order at some point we get to zero and then the while loop uh condition is not met anymore and the while loop exits Let's see how this works. We display all the values from five to one. So these are the the most basically um, uh, iterations. So how can I, can I iterate over arrays or or uh, or lists? And now what we can do is I want to introduce also briefly the break and continuous statements. Let's say. We have the break statement this is a the break keyword basically it causes the program to exit so let's say we have a break here what this means is that based on certain conditions when this uh, gets to this point when a break is hit the while loop is exited so for example let's say like this run it again we we get a five we display it and then we didn't come to this to this decrement and we simply exit the, the loop normally we will have here a condition for example if let's say if counter equals two for example then we want to execute this let's say like this and here we'll see we get all the elements until two then we have the break or we can have the continue uh, keyword this basically doesn't exit entirely the while loop or the for loop wherever it appears it simply means that for this element here for the two we we skip it and 
and continue with the next element which is the one here we will see if we run it again okay i get some errors here let's say because i didn't decrement this the counter i i, I have here also to to decrement it of course because this will get in the infinite loop of course i have to decrement the counter here also yeah because you saw earlier what happens good run it again and we see uh for two we we get this value decremented and continue in fact here is an error because we see that all are printed so the two um, should not be printed here that's because we we print it and afterwards checking this condition so the this right line method has to be done after this checking and the continue let's run it again and we see we get here all the values except the two because we have for two we have the continue statement good so these are the most basically looping and uh, uh, with the for loop and the while loop and we saw also the break and continue uh, keywords we have covered quite a lot of topics until now in the next uh, chapter we are going to look at another important concept in programming especially in c-sharp namely the concept of object-oriented programming um, object-oriented programming is, is an approach to programming that breaks a programming problem into objects that interact with each other objects are created from templates known as classes uh, a class is basically a blueprint uh, of, of a building for example and the real object is actually the building that we build based on the blueprint let's see how to declare our first uh, class um, switch it back to visual studio we can declare with the class keyword uh, let's declare a class name person and here for example uh, yeah mainly it's common to use the pascal casing when naming our classes so the first letter is uppercase and each other word uh, is is uh, written with uppercase so person sample for example so the first first letters from each word is uppercase so person is our first class so the content of a class is enclosed in uh, curly brackets starting and ending curly bracket um, contents of a class include constructors uh, constants fields methods properties indexers events a uh, lot like this uh, we will cover all of them next um, to understand what these are so the methods the properties let's build this class from scratch so we have already defined this console application and uh, and here we can start declaring members to this class we can declare for example some fields so fields are something like this so these are mainly private string so each person has a name uh, for example and an age private int age here we're using again um, yeah basically for fields we can use uh, lowercase so we're not using pascal casing so naming just the public properties are are set with uh, uh, pascal casing so the fields are lowercase we declare here two variables the string name and the age uh, these variables are known as fields of the class a field is simply a variable that is declared inside the class and uh, like any other variables they are used to store data notice that there is a word private in front of each declaration this is known as an access modifier access modifiers are like like uh, security uh, keepers they control who has access to that field a field can be either private public protected or internal 
Um, in our case, we declare the two fields as private. This means they can only be accessed from within the person class itself. So there are two reasons why we do not want the three fields to be accessible outside the class. The first reason is that there is no need for other classes to know about those fields. We will create some properties which have access to these fields and expose them outside of this class. Next, we will arrive at properties. So a property is commonly used to provide access to a private field uh, in cases where the field is needed by other classes. So for example, another class needs to know the, the name a value of this class. Uh, yeah, this may sound like a contradiction. Earlier we mentioned that we use private fields so that other classes do not have access to them. If that is the case, why are we allowing access to them via properties? So one of the main reasons is that we, using properties gives us greater control over what rights other classes have when accessing these private fields. We'll see how to do that later. For now, let us first learn how to declare a property. Let's see how to declare the first property. It's written like this, so this will be public. Public means it's visible by outside classes and ca can be called by other classes. Uh, this is the same the same type like you see we get some auto completion here in name and we have here a get and a set we get here also this and set basically this is very straightforward it's just a gatekeeper it controls the access to this uh, to this internal field private field Similarly, we can declare a property for the age. For example, public integer age. Again, we get a getter which simply retrieves the age and a setter which sets the age to this value. Good. Uh, we can also do here some validation. So if age less than 130, do this. If not, we will let the, the age uh, as zero, as before. As uh, that's why properties are 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 very good because we can do this this encapsulation. We could do this validation uh, based on data that is provided. Good. Uh, next, we see what methods are. So a method is a code block that performs a certain task. Let's create our first method here. Uh, for example, let's here create a public method. This has a return type. The return type of a method in this case is void because we just want to print something. Message. And let's see how this works. Uh, we're putting it like this and console we want to write something on a console. Uh, yeah, the person, person, we get here the name of it, name, uh, some other message here as the age, age plus age. Yeah? So we can write here some customized messages. The, the method declaration, as I said, uh, first stays the accessibility level of the method. Here we declare the method as public so that the method is accessible everywhere in the program, not just within the person class. We state the return type, which is void. A method may return a certain result after performing a task. If the method does not return any result, we use the void keyword like in this example. Um, and finally, the name of the method with which uh, we will call this, this method. Uh, good. So we have the class in place. We have some fields, some properties and uh, uh, also method. A method basically can access all the fields and properties that are declared inside the class. In addition, it can declare its own variables. These are known as local variables. For example, we can have here another variable, uh, integer 
the my variable this this is visible only inside this method this is a local variable whereas this uh, these two here are, 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 are variables with the scope of the whole class um, a method usually has at least one return statement return is a keyword uh, that is used to return an answer from a method so for example if we would have here an integer uh, this will give an error because uh, not all code pass return a value. So this one should return a value in this case. But since it's void, we, we, should, we don't have to return anything. Good. Um, yeah, we could have also um, method overloading. What this means, we can have here multiple methods. But we can have also methods similar like this. Uh, another print message. With, where we provide mainly uh, some parameters, you see we get an error here because this states that we don't can't have uh, the same method name. But if we provide different uh, parameter, we can declare multiple methods uh, through method overloading, and this enables us to have multiple methods with the same name but different uh, signatures. For example. If I have here a method, I can provide here a parameter. And if I provide this parameter to this method, this is visible inside of this method. And we can perform different operations in it. So as we'll see later, depends how we call this, this, um, this method, the respective method is called. Good. Um, constructors. Let's talk about also about a constructor, what the constructor is. A constructor is a special method that is used to construct an ob object from a class template. It is the first method that is called whenever we create an object from our class. Constructors are commonly used to initialize the fields of the class. Um, yeah, constructor always has the same name as the class. For example, here the constructor, we can write this one. Um, it looks like this, it's always public, it doesn't have a return type, and here we can perform some initialization logic. Um, what we can do with this, we can provide a constructor which has parameters, so for example, you see here we get some auto-completion, and with the help of this, we can initialize our fields directly without needing some to set them through some properties. Uh, let's say we want to implement this. I don't know why we get this uh, redundant. Let's do it like this. Okay, then we have here two parameters. And when we create our first person object, we can provide here the, the name and age through this constructor. Good. Um, let's see how to... Uh, yeah, also the declaring the constructor is optional if you do not declare your own constructor C sharp creates one for you automatically the default constructor is simply initializes all the fields in the class to default values which is normally zero for numeral fields and empty string for string fields let's see how to how to instantiate an object so as I said from a from a class we can create objects um, this process is known as instantiating an object. An object is also known as an instance. Let's see how our we can collapse here a bit to have a better overview. We have these two methods and the constructor here. Let's try to to instantiate an object of type person. How how we'll do it? Um, this is done like this. So we have to declare the the class name person uh person let's call it person one because we might create diff more persons later and this is done with the new new keyword uh good new person and we we have here to provide the name and the method then and the age is 23 it looks like this Actually, in order for this to work, we have to move here this this instantiation at the top. Just put it before the class, the person class. And now we just instantiate here, uh, 
here to person and here we want to print out the message as we defined it here in this one so without any argument and run it good so the output is like this so person then has the age of 23 right we can also provide a parameterless constructor like this and here we can call then instantiate this class without any parameters but then we have to provide this name and age through this property so for example person one dot name equals let's say like this Paul now and person one dot age let's say 30 yeah and run it again you see we get the same result we can either provide this these values the name and age through the constructor or through properties but normally we do it with the constructor if we have these values beforehand good um we saw earlier that once we have the constructed a new person class we use the dot operator to access any properties um and uh, any method we created um good so we saw in this example how to create an object how to populate its properties and how to execute a custom method we just created next we're going to talk about the static keyword um yeah we'll look at this keyword which is used when declaring uh, classes or methods let's say we want to create here a new static method and we'll do this like this let's here below this methods we create now a static method public static uh, string let's say greeting equals hello good what this means is that we have now this method which can be accessed directly on the person class so without the need to instantiate a new person class to access it we can do it like this let's get rid of this object creation here control cup kc and now what we can do is just console right line and now we're just calling person dot greeting this works this doesn't give any compiler error and when we run it we see we get the greeting the hello from here so this means for the static methods these are the static methods are not bound to a specific object so uh, to a specific instance of this class but they are they can be called directly with the static keywords we can have also static classes means static classes cannot be instantiated so if we have something like this uh, static class person yeah we see we don't can't in static class we can't have uh, private uh, fields and uh, properties yeah so this will not work we can have only static methods in a static class good let's put it back and next we're going to talk about inheritance polymorphism uh, abstract classes and methods we already covered and interfaces so inheritance is one of the key concepts of object-oriented programming inheritance allows us to create a new class from an existing class so that we can effectively reuse existing code for this we have to write a parent class 
for example let's say we we want to create a class which which is the base class for its derived members let's say like this we have for example in our visual studio code we have this class person which may act as a as a base class which can be derived from um, let's create a child class for this so to create a derived class from the person class uh, we have to do it like this so a derived class inherits all the public and protected members from the parent class uh, in other words it can use those fields properties and methods as if they are part of its own code let's say we do it like this um, let's create here a new class it will look like this let's collapse this a bit and here below we, we can create class uh, man which derives from person so this basically we can use the here the man class exactly the same like we like we use the person here and uh, we get the same result so basically all the fields and proper public properties here are available also in the man class uh, similarly we can have also women or i don't know everything which is a person can derive from the person class for example i don't know a child or whatever can derive from this because they all share the same the same methods women so like this but we're concentrating also only on one example for now so the man class um let's do it like this we can for example if something is not enough in the man class we can override some specific methods from here so for example if we want to define a new behavior from the print message we we have to provide here the override uh, keyword so in order to uh, virtual actually yeah in the base class we have to write here virtual so this means that these methods can be overridden in, in a derived in a derived class and here we do it like this public uh, override void and you see we get here some uh, intellisense so the only suitable method override is a print message uh, base print message we can do the same method here we can call base print message but this will generally call the 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 print message from the base class so the base class is the person in this case so this will call this one but actually we can do here another logic we can cut this here and put this here and say something like this um with the, the you see we don't have access to this private properties from here we have to to use this public here to get the name and the age we have to use the public methods we have to use age if you want to navigate to these properties you can use f12 so if you press f12 on this one you will see it's navigated to this person class here what this does let's customize this a bit from man class person okay let's run it and see the result so you see here the the message is from the man class okay good uh, let's talk a bit now about polymorphism um, now that we have seen an example of how inheritance works let's discuss about something which is closely related to inheritance the concept of polymorphism polymorphism refers to a program's ability to use the correct method for an object based on its runtime type
let's extend this a bit so for example we want to to uh, override also this method in the woman class we do the same we just copy paste just delete this because we're not calling the base print message and here woman good we see here we have this to override the methods so here for example we want to do something else now um let's do create a list of of person yeah to demonstrate polymorphism persons new list and we are adding here new two new 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 items into this list We're not adding person, we're adding man. New man. Okay. And we're adding also woman. Good. Once this is defined, so you see the the type of the person list is of type person it it's it doesn't know if this will be man or woman and we can iterate now over each element to print them out var we're using the var is a generic uh, keyword which infers the type at, at runtime so, but we also can call his person, it's the same thing. We know also the man and the woman are both person. Persons. Uh, we're just calling the person dot print message. You see, even though we don't know uh, exactly when we're writing this code, if this is a man or the woman we just can call this print message because it's a virtual method which which is in the base class and this will work uh, independently if we override it or not in the the derived class just run it again we see so we get this result that uh, from the man class we display the age and from the woman class we do the same actually we didn't provide the name and the age that's why we don't get values for name and age but this is very simple to do just put here a name then 30 woman anna 23 yeah good we'll see here we get an error be that's because that's because we didn't provide here some uh, a constructor with this method so for this one we can do something like this we can write this something like this public man and this will put here similar like this the constructor and this will basically call the base base the base constructor from the person class which initializes this field and for the woman we can do this the same woman good now if we run it again you see we get here some real values good uh so basically we saw here how this person print message behaves this is a result of polymorphism at runtime when the program runs the program determines that the first uh, that this message uh, are is part of the man or the woman class it also determines uh, correctly that it's uh, it has to call this methods from here so the man class and from the woman class so basically if polymorphism is very simple it means that at runtime the program is smart enough to use the print methods from the respective child class next we're gonna talk 
a bit about interfaces. Interfaces are similarly to abstract classes because they cannot be instantiated and must be inherited. However, interfaces are more uh, are a bit different than abstract classes that they, they can only contain methods with no bodies. They cannot contain fields but can contain properties. Uh, interfaces else also cannot have static members like this one with the greeting here we saw earlier. One of the key differences between abstract class and an interface is that a class can only inherit one abstract class but can implement multiple interfaces. This is the main difference. So let's declare here an interface for example. Um, interface for the person class and normally the naming is like this we precede this this naming with the oi i this means this is an interface and here we we want to declare the methods which should be uh, available from the interface so for example we want to have this a print message as as an interface so this provides an abstraction uh, of the implementation so maybe the outside code which calls this person methods uh, has no interest to knowing the the exact inner workings of the person class so in this case we use directly the the interface what how so in order to implement this iPerson interface, we have to derive it here in the person class. Here, for example, then we can use this iPerson directly because the person class uh, in, derived from this, implements this interface, means also the man and the woman also, also implement this interface. So this, to run it again, here we can put also a person run this matter again you see it works exactly the same lastly we want to see how to read and write to text files so this will show a very simple example so reading and writing to text file is very common in a, in c sharp it's very easy we have a lot of built-in uh, uh, objects and classes in the base class library for doing this let's see how to do it let's switch again to to visual studio I'll write a simple example so basically we will we'll want to have a new stream writer we're using the stream writer for this we're, we're providing here a using so this means that uh, this the using takes care of disposing uh, required resources after we're using the stream writer let's say we're doing like this stream writer new stream writer we're providing here the path we want to write some text let's say uh, we're doing on the d drive my file dot txt and here we want to provide the flag if we want to append to the to the file or or recreate the contents yeah we want to just append some text here and here then we can simply write line some text first line So for the right line, second line. Uh, good. And in the end, we have to close this uh, stream right here yeah? to dispose the resources. Okay. Um, yeah, just, just run this example here. We ha didn't have no output because we haven't printed anything on the 
console output but if we open now the the generated text file from d you, s you see we we have here a new file on the d drive with the first line and second line good uh reading reading a file is straightforward so we have to do uh something like this we can use multiple methods for looping and reading all the elements reading elements is done with the stream reader stream reader well the okay so this has also two parameters basically we don't have to create here the second parameter it just open the files stream reader for example we can use here a while to 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 read all 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 lines of code all, all lines of text so for example while we're not reached the, the end end of the stream Let's call the stream reader. This happens with copy paste. End of stream. If we're not at the end of the stream, we we'll repeatedly here again stream reader. And we are outputting the respective line. Running this again, you see we get the file we just created and read the lines one by one and print it out at a console. Good. So basically this was it. So in this video we saw some examples on how to create our first C Sharp program. We created a console application we we saw how to create classes how to instantiate classes create objects how to how to use inheritance polymorphism and in the end we saw how to read and write two text files so hope you enjoyed this course and for more courses please subscribe to my channel